court will call the meeting to order. Um, I do know that I saw when I was on a little bit ago that we do have Suzanne Scroggins, David Boyle, Susie Scholl already on. Jim Agnew is going to join us a little late um, this evening. So just want to again remind everybody the meeting is recorded. Um, we'll be publishing the recording after um, the meeting just so folks if they want to go back and listen or for people who couldn't make it this evening. We have a, a large number of folks on the on the line which is great. Um, the intent tonight is is to do a couple of things. Number one, um, um, Aaron Obi, Superintendent of School, is going to give an update on how the first couple of days of e-learning has gone and um, anything, you know, the positives, some of the challenges we've had, and what are we going to be going forward. I see, and now I see Jim Agnew. It's great. So, and then from there, we do have a little bit of business to do um, just to approve a couple of items uh, that are required in order for us to, to, to keep moving with regard to some contractual things. So we'll be doing that um, at the end of the meeting and taking some votes. Prior to the votes, actually, we'll be opening up uh, school committee questions. Um, I'll go through roll call on that so they can um, ask any of their questions and we'll open it up to the audience. Those of you who've been on the past couple, um, if you could drop them into the chat box, it makes it a little, it's made it a lot easier. You can either send it so everybody can see it or you can send it directly to me. Again, this is Mike Tropiano. Happy to then read the question and then we will direct it where it needs to be. So um, again, appreciate everybody joining in. Erin, would you like to take it away? Sure. Um, first off, I just want to thank all of our teachers and our support staff, our building principals, um, our content supervisors, everybody has really been extremely patient and flexible over these past three weeks, and it is much appreciated. Um, uh, as Mike referenced, this is our, our first um, full, few full days of remote learning. And as we discussed it kind of in uh, theory last week, um, I think the rollout is, it was actually much smoother than we could have hoped for. Um, but again, there have been a few bumps. Um, we have been working with um, not only staff, but also families around some of the technology pieces. So it is a lot on the end user um, piece for families to be getting in, logged into Google Classroom or Seesaw, you know, um, getting familiarity with Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Slides. Um, so it has been a, a bit of a learning curve, um, less so for our staff and more so for families, but there's still definitely pieces that our staff is working to become more familiar with. Um, we asked for some initial feedback from the teachers about how it's been going. Um, and I think technology bumps aside, uh, I think I can say the consensus of the teachers is that it has been a tremendous amount of work um, to get this up and going. And again, we are appreciative of all of the time they put in, um, not, on, not just on their own, but collaborating with, you, with each other at grade levels and across buildings. Um, but I think overall it's going really well. So I think, you know, when we talked about this, Last week and the week before, we talked about you know the number one reason um, that Commissioner Riley has, has pushed out the remote learning is is for students to be able to keep their connection with their teachers and with the staff in the schools that they're they're most familiar seeing. So our number one focus is mental health for students. Um, the remote learning obviously is a, a newer piece for us this week. The guidelines are that we're providing um, about three hours of academic work a day for students, um, and that's a lot. It, it is a lot. Um, having a second and fifth grader at home that I'm managing their homeschooling end on, it's a lot. And sometimes it's not three hours, sometimes it's five hours, and some, some days it's an hour. Um, so really finding where that sweet spot is for families, where it's a manageable task that we're asking them to do, but at the same time making sure that our students are staying engaged in their schoolwork. Um, I think a lot of teachers were very pleased with the turnout that they had, whether they had um, a traditional morning meeting or if they've done some office hours. A few of the elementary teachers whose comments I read had mentioned that, you know, almost all over their class joined the morning meeting. And as, as excited as students were to see their teacher, they were also excited to see, to see each other. And again, that was the goal here. The goal was to keep kids connected and feeling safe. Um, at the same time, I think this is our first week and this is day three. And I think there's, we're still looking for the balance. I think that teachers are pushing out a ton of amazing work and assignments for students. And, um, you know, I think it's, on the family end, families are still trying to manage um, what that looks like in their own home, understanding that there are definitely families that are, that parents are still trying to work their job full time from home. Um, and, you know, multiple students that need support while they're doing their remote learning work. And so I have had some feedback from parents. Um, I think there is much respect for what our teachers do here. I don't think 
um, you know, anybody would, would want to jump on the teaching profession at this moment that has uh, traditionally not been a teacher, um, but I do think that they are feeling a little bit overwhelmed. And so, um, you know, we'll continue to get some feedback from both families and from teachers over the next two or three days and make whatever adjustments are necessary. I think, um, you know, just having, taking a look at the list of participants here in this meeting, a lot of them are our staff. Um, there are a lot of teachers in here. And again, you know, the amount of work that they put in to get this off the ground starting on Monday has been um, amazing. And, you know, this, they're working right now at a pace that they cannot sustain for um, weeks on weeks. So I think, you know, finding the balance between, you know, what is essential for us that we want students to be able to do um, if and when we return on May 4th and working backwards um, from that endpoint is definitely what our focus will be as we start preparing um, the lessons and assignments for next week. That's all I have, um, Mike, for an update. If you want to, if there's anything else you want me to update on, I'm happy to update on our um, grab and go meals that we're still serving. Um, so this week, grab and go is at Habamok on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, because Friday is Good Friday. So it is not a um, work day um, for staff here in Pembroke. But, um, you know, we've had great um, turnout there as well. I anticipate those numbers to go up. Um, over the next weeks because the firehouse pantry has also closed down for two weeks. Um, so we are anticipating that uh, a bit of an increase in participation on our end and um, have been working with the food services staff to keep up with that demand. Great. Erin, before I turn it over um, to uh, Suzanne for questions and then we'll go to um, David, Jim, and then Susie. Are is there any last meeting with the, uh, um, with the, with so Mike, if you're talking, we can't hear you. I think that your audio. Or no, your audio. you know okay. what? I just I just found <laughs> that my internet connection dropped out. Um, okay, so I didn't get any of it, of but I'm sure it was amazing. <laughs> It was, I think it was, it was pure gold. Um, it's real quick, so uh, can you give any type of update before we go to Suzanne for the first questions? Um, any type of update from the commissioners meeting last Friday and any thoughts on what we're going to hear next from them and when we'll hear? Um, so there is, I'll answer the second part first. Um, there is not a commissioner's call this Friday because of the holiday. Um, we did get an email update from um, Commissioner Riley's office earlier today, just reinforcing some of the things that we've already talked about. Um, last week's conversations centered around um, April vacation, the direction that school districts were going in for that, um, and really just the, the reaffirmation from Commissioner Riley that um, calendar changes and updates are at the discretion of school committees. It's not something that would be coming out as a directive um, from the Commissioner of Education, but at the same time, um, explaining what the different scenarios could be if you were to shift calendar to hold or not hold April vacation. Um, the other piece that Commissioner Riley has been continually updating us about um, is about vendor payments. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the struggles that we're facing um, paying for um, vendor payments for goods and services that technically were not rendered. So um, still a lot of conversation happening at the state level with the Department of Revenue. Um, the Department of, of course of um, elementary and secondary education is involved in those conversations because of the effect that it has on some of our special ed providers and our transportation vendors. Um, so just continuing to recap those conversations that I've been having at the state level. As I mentioned to you before, there is a piece with the municipal finance law that would require um, a change in legislation to allow us to pay for goods and services that haven't been rendered. So um, Commissioner Riley was just updating superintendents and business managers about that piece as well. So nothing really new, um, <laughs> but still keeping the, the, motor, the um, line of communication open. He has been responsive. If you call or text him directly, he will get right back to you. He has given everybody his um, cell phone number, so I couldn't say um, more about how responsive he has been to the um, to every superintendent in the state. Great, great, thank you. Okay, um, let's turn it over to Suzanne. Do you have any questions at all at this point? Uh, no, no real questions. Um, just uh, well, first of all, thank you to everybody. Um, you know, administration, staff, teachers, parents, students, community, everybody. Um, you know, everybody's pulling together um, to, to, to do the best we can. 
Um, Erin, could you just quickly update on equipment? Uh, does everybody have the equipment they need? We have, we're able to get it to them. That's just one piece that I know we sure. can update every week. Sure, so um, last Friday, Mary Beth, myself, um, Mark Talbot, Brandon, Mike Murphy, handed out over 100 Chromebooks at the high school in the pouring rain. It was an, an amazing day for us. Um, at, that, at this point, we've given out, a, a, I think, close to 300 devices to families, to students and families. Um, you know, we said that Friday was the last day we would be handing out devices, but we have heard from a couple of families since Friday that need access to a device. So we've been working with them one-on-one -on -one to pick up a di device from the school. So at this point, we believe everybody has the um, necessary equipment to access what we're pushing out for remote learning. Um, but if there is somebody out there that needs help, they can reach out um, through uh, our email or the um, Pembroke Public Schools homepage has a link to get in contact with us about the devices. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't have any questions right now. Thank you, Mike. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, David. Do we have me, Mike? We do. We can... Oh, there we go. I'm getting better at this between Zoom and WebEx. I'm starting to catch on a little. <laughs> there you go. Hey, first and foremost, following up on Suzanne's comments, uh, can't say enough about the administration, staff, teachers, parents and caregivers. Uh, again, we're all in this together. Uh, I was part of that uh, little hit parade where they were handing out things in the pouring rain. I think you saw my email. Uh, I just thought that was a, a great effort, you know, based on the elements and everything else. Um, I think probably my first question was the, the grab and go, and I heard that's going well, so I can kind of wipe that off my agenda. Um, I'm not sure it's the appropriate time, Mike, but where we budget wise, you know, going to next year, town meeting, or um, should we discuss that now or at a later time? Sure, sure. No, um, just, it's actually a good point to bring up right now. Um, as most people know, or some people may know, and if you don't, I uh, wanted to let you know, town meeting has been postponed to June. Um, so that delays the, the timing, um, or which we need to get the budget done. However, we still need to get a budget done. The plan we're working on at this point is to convene uh, most likely next week on a budget session just to talk about where we are in this current fiscal year. Um, for those of you who may not have known, um, we were dealt with some extraordinary special education costs uh, for this fiscal year, um, some move-ins, change in services, which turned our budget a little sideways that we were in the process of solving before um, we were dealing with this crisis. So we will be getting back to that, David, most likely next week. Um, and then from there, we'll keep working on where we are on the fiscal year 21 budget, um, knowing we have a little bit of time going into June. However, we don't want to um, lose the time that we have in order to make sure that we get to a, the best budget we possibly can. So good timing question. I think I saw it too today, an article that looks like the state budget could be delayed a little. Um, how will that affect us? Or will it affect us at all? Or... <laughs> Well, I think we yeah. end up in the black at the end of this year. Yeah, so 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 the state the state budget. There's a bunch of things going on. There's obviously an impact to revenues uh, for this year, which is going to impact this year's budget, which will roll into next year. Um, clearly, people realize people restaurants aren't open, so people aren't going um, out to eat, so they're not collecting meals tax. Car sales aren't up, so they're not collecting additional sales tax from that, or and the bump in excise tax they usually get. And you can go on and on about you know, everything with wages, um, et cetera, that they're getting hit with. So they're delayed now. They're going to delay the budget, most likely. They have talked about, and Aaron, fill, fill in any blanks here, that they might go into just a one-month rollover um, at the state level in order to give them more time to balance. There was something talking yesterday that they are still meeting at the – House and Senate are still meeting every second or third day, and they can meet virtually. They just don't do roll call votes um, because they're, they obviously have to pass other bills. So the budget is, they've even taken a, a slight pause. Normally, we would have seen the House budget by now. We haven't clearly because um, they've had other priorities. So the whole process is delayed, and it's going to make it a little bit more challenging from us, but we will... Um, have to we have to get back to the work and we'll we'll start that within the next week or so. Aaron, did I miss anything? Would you add anything there? 
Um, no, other than I was on that weekly forum um, with PAC TV with Representative Cutler yesterday, and he mentioned that they were um, looking at the 112 budgeting that we had discussed the last time at the state level as well. So going into July 1 with a 112 budget as opposed to a year long FY21 budget. Yep. Any other questions from David or anybody else on uh, from the committee on the budget process to it? Mike, I'll stand down and I'm not sure who's next. Um, we will go to Jim. I've been doing these in case you haven't figured it out by by seniority, just because it's easier rather than alphabetically. So, Jim. Hey, Mike. Hey, Aaron. Thank you very much. I think three days into this, it's it's been pretty impressive. Um, you know, we've been watching, you know, how things have been going uh, as far as the curriculum piece and, and the technology, and I think we're all pleasantly surprised. The only question I had, and, and I'll echo one of the questions on chat right now, is I know we've had to cobble together this in a relatively short period of time. There really wasn't a strategy uh, that we had a lot of time to format, but I know there's a lot of different access points and communication points. I don't know if there's a way to streamline that. I know we're getting you know, different information on different platforms from, from different teachers. Um, and I think that may be something just as an opportunity for improvement downstream, uh, if there is a way to, to limit just the number of touch points. So I'll just leave it at that. I'm really not asking for an answer right now. It's, it's more of an observation. And it's some of the comments that, uh, that I've been getting in some emails from some parents as well. And that's it. Sure, so I'll just say a little something about that, understanding that you know each week it should get a little bit better. Um, I think the, the platform that we're using consistently, pre-K to 12 is Google Classroom or Seesaw, depending on what age level your student is at. I think the, the amount of emails and communication that you're getting from um, teachers is based off of questions that other parents are asking. So I think they're trying to get the same level of information out to everybody. So as you know, a parent finds the glitch with how to upload something from a doc and share it, um, I think that the teacher is communicating with the whole group um, in order to kind of alleviate some of that. So, you know, after this is definitely the, the bumps of the first week that we were anticipating, I would expect it to be much more streamlined as we move forward. Sounds good. Great. Thanks, Jim. Susie. Um, just want to reiterate, like everybody else, thank you um, so much. Thanks, thanks for the 85 different folks that have joined the meeting tonight. Uh, and I, I, I love this type of community participation, and I thank you for dialing in and doing this. Um, second thing, tied to the budget, Aaron, you mentioned that there was a, a discussion with Josh. Um, are they going to set up, perhaps, you know, with Josh or, as our, our state rep, will he be setting up regular communication to you? Um, to keep us, you know, as up to date as we can on budget changes from the state level as soon as it's available. And my other question, I know we're getting feedback from parents and we're getting feedback from the, the staff on how this is working and what they might want to change. Are we soliciting feedback from the students too, just so that we can get a feel from the, you know, the end user? Um, so first question about Josh, um, as Mike mentioned, we would normally have our house ways and means budget by now. Um, so yes, Josh has, I think once things settle a little bit um, um, for the folks at the state level, uh, the, like ours, their conversation will shift more towards FY21 budgeting. Um, so he's usually really good about sharing information um, as, it, as it comes out of um, the House of Representatives. So um, great. I have an opportunity to speak with him each week, so I'm sure our conversation will shift from COVID-19 to the budget shortly. Um, we get so much unsolicited feedback from kids. <laughs> you can just see their face in a morning meeting and know how it's going. Um, I think we have gotten some feedback um, from some secondary students about more questions um, than concern, just questions about how things are getting graded, um, you know, are we quote unquote taking attendance, that kind of stuff. Um, but I think for the for being just three days in, things are going extremely well, K through 12. Um, so I think it would be nice to think of a good way to survey students in a, in a little bit of time, just to see you know overall how it's going once we're um, past this initial bumpy four or five days. And that kind of is in line with my follow-up question to that, knowing you know ultimately the school year will come to an end. Um, and, you know, I mentioned it last week that when there was a press conference and the doctor that's been briefing on how this is going and potential spikes in the COVID virus, 
Um, he mentioned they, there may, with an emphasis on the word may, be a resurgence in November. I, I would love to see us come up with some sort of end of the year survey of what worked, what didn't work to the students to help us as we continue to build this process in anticipation, hopefully of never having this again, but you know, tweaking the wonderful work that's already been done um, should we sadly have to go through this again. Um, I, I just would love to see that kind of data collected while it's still fresh in the students' minds. Absolutely, agree. Great, well, that's all I have. Thank you and Great. thank you everybody. Thank you, Susie. Um, Aaron, before I just uh, make a comment, can you just give an update on where we are for April vacation? I'm sure that is on the top of hmm. the minds of many of the folks on tonight. Sure, so it's further down on your agenda, but I'm happy to talk about it now. What you have in, in your packet is a draft um, uh, updated 1920 school calendar. Um, what we're proposing is that the week that would have traditionally been April vacation, the week of April 20th is a, is a teaching week or a remote learning week for us. Um, so April 20th is Patriots Day, so that would be um, a, a no school day, that is a holiday here. Um, and then we'd be asking teachers to provide remote learning assignments for students for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that week. Um, so it would be a three-day week. We'd be giving everybody a break on Friday. Um, and what that does to the end of the calendar is that um, with the commissioner's guidance, what he is suggesting or recommending is that any days that are worked over April vacation would come off the end of the school year. So. Um, with all of this conversation around the 185th day. So the 185th day for Pembroke would have would be June 19th, Friday, June 19th, um, with the teachers um, providing lessons and the students accessing remote learning those three days over April vacation. The last day of school in Pembroke would be Tuesday, June 16th. Great, thank you. Just wanted to get that ahead of time. So we will be uh, voting on the revised school calendar a little bit later. Aaron, would it make sense um, while we're on the topic of school calendar, to bring the calendar for 2021 to the next meeting, at least as a draft, just so people can start to see, because I know there's been some questions about, will this year impact start of next year? I think that may help, um, just at least to get some information out there, make sure everybody's uh, understands. I mean, just, just for a, a preview, I would anticipate the calendar for 2021 looking very similar to it has how, how it has in years past with um, staff starting the Monday before Labor Day for a couple of days, bringing students in for a few days that week, um, and then uh, you know the full week following Labor Day. So just a preview. Great, thank you. Um, real quick, I will say before I turn it over and we start going through some of the questions that are coming in, I know Mary Beth just let me know some of the questions are ending up with her and some are not able to get through to me. I'm not sure why, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll resolve that over the next, within the first question or two. So just give us a second on that one. But before I go, if we start to go into the first question, I wanna reiterate what everybody um, has said um, about thanking the staff, the teachers. Uh, I see Renee on and um, her and the rest of the, the PTA for being good partners through this. This is, as everybody knows, this is uncharted waters. And you know, as I've heard it, the analogy, we're building the plane as we're trying to fly it. Um, and it really, does come into into play here. Um, a lot of the work that all the teachers have done and been resilient and adapt to remote learning, um, but also want to uh, point out, you know, Erin and her staff, uh, Mary Beth and Jess, all the work they've done over these weeks is the information has come in in trying to make fact-based decisions and it's 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 been hard. Um, and I think they've done a good job of communicating um, and they've really got to the to the staff what they've needed and the staff has really um done well um actually better than well um you know in, in helping us get through this difficult time so thank you to everyone involved so uh first question from that i have here from jay sawyer we'll get the rest of them up um or we'll go through them all before the night's over um thank you thank you for all the information in the work of the teacher staff have done to get this going one general question if teachers have started I'm sorry, I stated a Google Hangout session is optional and they do not attend. Can the students still be marked absent? So we're not, um, we're not taking attendance in those um, morning meeting or Google Hangout, lovingly known as Google Meets now, um, sessions. Those are optional for students to participate in. 
Um, we talked about this a little bit last time, but I'm happy to review that um, the way we're um, looking at this section of time is as credit, no credit. Um, so in order to receive credit, students do need to be accessing um, the assignments that teachers are sending out, but you do not necessarily have to participate in the live, um, you know, in real time, um, real time check in with the teacher either through Google Meets or um, morning meeting. The teachers may be just keeping track themselves because we've asked that any student that isn't um, participating in those real time check ins that we take an additional step to reach out to those students and families and make sure that they have everything they need. Um, and it was just a choice not to participate. We want to make sure that they're they have the support that they need. They know how to sign on. Um, and that they're able to access if they do want to access. So there's no official attendance being taken, though teachers may be checking just for their own um, sake so that they can follow up with any families that they notice are missing. Great, thank you. Um, from James Mulhern, uh, from speaking to other parents in towns located in Massachusetts, most of their towns appear to be in a graded distance online learning format. Is that not consistent in each town in Mass at the discretion of the state? So the recommendation from um, Commissioner Riley for this period of remote learning was the credit or no credit, or also known as pass or fail. Um, credit, no credit just seems a little bit softer um, for families. Um, that was his recommendation for how to handle work over this period of time, understanding that it is nearly impossible to guarantee that every student has everything they need to access every piece of what we're pushing out, understanding you know, there's some technology pieces, there's support at home, there's a whole bunch of other factors that play into whether or not a student is successful in a remote learning platform. Um, as far as there isn't a requirement from the state that it be credit, no credit, um, but here on the South Shore, we did kind of get together as a group of superintendents and landed pretty much in the same place. There are a couple of places that um, are calling it meets expectations or doesn't meet expectations, just you know, a couple of play on words around credit or no credit, um, but assigning grades would be very difficult. In order to assign a, a letter grade to this work, we would have to be sure that students were able, um, that students had equitable access. And I think at this point, um, that's not something that I would be comfortable doing for families. At the end of the day, what we, the intent of this was not to penalize any student for the, this uncertainty that we're living in, um, but to keep them engaged in school and to be thinking academically um, and to make sure that their mental health and social emotional well-being are intact. So assigning letter grades, I think, would um, be a step in the wrong direction for us. Great, thank you. Um, um, if we answered the April vacation question, if there's still are follow-ups on that, please just shoot them out there and we'll make sure we get to those. So this is from owner. Um, could the teachers try to streamline their assignments announcements to once or twice a day? We have multiple students, all with multiple teachers. We as parents, as well as the students, are feeling inundated with information, updates, and assignments multiple times a day on multiple media sources, Google Classrooms, Google Remind, and email. Our students, sorry, the box is big, big enough. Our students all look forward to the meetings on Google Meets, and it's made a big difference in their days. Thank you to all the teachers, and they are, are adjusting to the system as well. And thank you to all of you for making e-learning possible in Pembroke. So. Erin. Um, like I said before, I would anticipate the level of communication from the classroom teachers will um, peter off a little bit over the coming weeks. But at the same time, there is, um, I think, a setting in Google where you can set how often you would like to receive a summary to. So you can change it from daily to weekly. Um, there's a couple of setting pieces on your end that you can do so that you're not inundated um, with email as well. But I would anticipate that after this first week or two, it, it you know, most of the um, overarching questions should be answered and there would be far fewer communications coming out um, via email from your classroom teachers. Great, thank you. Um, the next one, um, do you have an idea of a senior end date? I do, but I'm not telling anyone, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so I think it's, a, you know, we're gonna wait to see what happens with the May 4th date. Um, I would anticipate next Friday's conference call with um, Commissioner Riley will give us a good idea on whether or not May 4th is going to be um, a reality or not. And based off of that decision, um, we will figure out what the last day for seniors would be and how we can, and what we can do on our end to make sure that their experience wrapping up their, um, their school years here in Pembroke is something special and memorable. So, um, you know, after next Friday, I think we're gonna have to do a lot of planning here internally so that we can make sure that those kids in the class of 2020 um, get the experience that we all want them to have. Um, so at this point, there's not, I don't have a date in mind, but I would anticipate the next time 
this committee gets together, which I think is the 21st, um, we would be talking about um, those type of things. Great, thank you. Um, and I will just put out a quick commercial. If you do not have your class of 2020 graduate sign and would like to purchase one for the class of 2020, please let my, me know or you can message my daughter. I have a box of them sitting in my basement. Um, okay, so if we have here, um, just curious, why are Google Hangouts optional versus mandatory for class? Is there a reason behind that? Sure. Um, so Google Google Hangouts, or we call it Google Meets. Um, Google Meets and morning meetings are optional for families. Um, not all families are comfortable putting their student in front of a screen um, in real time. Um, it is, you know, obviously a, a family decision um, for some folks that are not super comfortable with their child's um, picture or voice being shared um, over a platform that they don't have a ton of um, control in. Um, you know, some of the expectations that we sent out to families last week did include that any of the parameters in our handbooks as well as our acceptable use policy would be in place in this remote learning time but still um, there are definitely um, those families that are making the, the conscious choice to not um, participate in the real-time check-ins just for the privacy reasons great thank you um i have a couple more and if any others please put them in um and I'll go to Mary Beth at the end in case there are any that did not make it over. Um, from Renee, um, saying th thank you, the PTA, for those of you who don't know, the Pembroke Teachers Association, uh, is fortunate to have such a great working relationship with the administration of the Pembroke Public Schools and our school committee. This has made working through figuring out how to best navigate through the difficult dif difficulties of the crisis, teaching and learning ones that were able to do expeditiously. Sorry, it's a small box and I keep moving. <laughs> <laughs> the PTA is thankful for your flexibility and concern in regard to the well-being of staff and students at all times during the school closure and it remains the top priority. And that it remains a top priority, sorry, absolutely. And I'll just speak for the committee clearly. When this started, um, safety was our number one priority for everyone, um, and it will continue. And when it comes the time um, to go back to school, we, it will clearly be a well thought out decision, um, you know, in collaborating with all the stakeholders to make sure we're doing the right thing and we do it the right way. While there'll be state guidance, and we talked about this last week, um, we will you know, do everything we can to make sure everyone is safe and comfortable going back, So, uh, which is very important. So we do have one more, and I'm sorry, I'm just having been a long day, tough navigating through this little chat box. So um, the next one, I came over from Mary Beth. Um, you were saying how beneficial it has been to have students face-to-face -face contact whenever possible with their teachers and their classmates. Is there a requirement with regard to how many Google Meet calls each teacher needs to have per week so there is consistency across grade levels? Um, nope. So the expectation of teachers is just that they provide three opportunities for real-time check-ins with students. So a lot of our teachers are using Google Meets or morning meeting. Some of our teachers are making one-on-one -on -one phone calls to families. Um, we've left it up to the discretion of the teacher for what um, they believe works best for their students as well as for themselves. So, you know, as I mentioned before, there are definitely families that have issues around um, privacy associated with this remote learning platform. We have the same with staff as well. Um, so we wanna make sure that what they're um, being asked to do is something that they're comfortable with. So we have um, openly just said that our expectation is that they're um, checking in in real time with students three times a week. So that can look a variety of different ways, um, but the expectation is just the number of occurrences, not the um, way in which it happens. Oh, I think Mike muted himself. <laughs> um, I can see the next question. I did. I okay. did. Well, you, yeah, I did, of course. Um, how will pass fail affect GPA? Um, so that we're still looking at. Um, there are a couple of um, different scenarios out there that I've seen. Um, it's one of those topics that local school systems are just trying to work through right now. Um, so as we said the last time, our um, focus right now is to close out term three at the secondary level. Um, so we have allowed students until April 13th to make up any missed work for term three. Um, and any new work that's been assigned 
from April 6th on is under the credit, no credit heading. So um, looking at figuring out GPAs, um, weighted GPAs based off of um, the understanding that we don't want students to be penalized for this uncertain time here. So um, obviously coming up with a formula that is in the best interest of students. So a couple of examples of what I have seen in area towns looking at is that this um, credit, no credit section doesn't figure at all um, into GPAs. A couple of other people are just using semester one um, grades for the year average. Again, all things that we will um, look at uh, we'll have a better idea of what the formula will be once we know whether or not students will be returning on May 4th. So if it's the entire fourth term is credit, no credit, that will um, move us in one direction. But if there is a portion of time in term four where we actually have students in classrooms and that we have graded material, we'll have to think of a, a different scenario as well. So um, once we know if May 4th is going to be the actual return to school date or not, we can, we'll work from there and communicate with families too. Great. Thank you. Okay, so um, again from Michelle McManus, at the middle school level, um, can't speak for other levels, because they are listed as optional, barely any kids are showing up. Could the teachers talk about the ability to not use video and encourage the kids to attend if possible? The interaction is key right now, um, even, for even for mental health. It is a human interaction and connection. That would be hugely helpful. I know this isn't, I know this isn't easy though. Right, so like I said before, um, our teachers are not keeping a, taking attendance, but they are keeping track of who's in and not in. So some teachers have had the opportunity to have um, one or two of those in-time, real-time check-ins so far this week. Um, and the expectation is that any family that isn't accessing them, that we're reaching out an additional time to talk to them about their choice or whether or not it's something that we are doing on our end. And again, part of that would be the education that students can join those real-time live check-ins without video content. Um, and I do think that that um, is not something that everybody necessarily understands. So the benefit of that conversation and maybe um, us walking some families through how to get on without having the video um, could change the attendance at the secondary level as well. So but is there- At the elementary level, most yeah. students are participating. <laughs> um, but the secondary level, I have heard that as well, that there are, few, there are fewer students um, in the Google Meet. So is it possible to put out a combination of FAQ best practices and do don'ts, whatever you want to call it, in order to at least or make yeah, sure? Yeah, so I think in my communication on Friday to families, there's a couple of things I want to highlight. I want to highlight, obviously, I will um, kind of walk them through the options to part, quote unquote, participate without the video. Um, I'd also like to remind families that they should not be taping what's going on in live meetings. So um, our staff at the beginning of the live session reads a disclaimer that um, our legal counsel has provided that just says that the meeting is being recorded. It is being recorded for the teacher's records. So um, we've asked in the expectations that went out to families as well as the um, disclaimer about remote learning does explicitly state that they should not be taping. Um, the interaction, the live interactions with teachers. And I, and I know it's, it's so cute when your second grader is on there and their teacher's reading to them. Um, and you know, we have heard a couple of instances of people taking a snippet of video and posting it to Facebook and saying, you know, you know, my son got to see his favorite classmates and all of that. And I understand the, the good nature of that. But again, we're asking that, that families not be taping the um, real-time check-ins either. So I will reiterate that to families as well as give them some options on how to participate without using the video. Do we have any other options for other check-ins if kids just want to get together? Um, any yeah. other potential options that we have or to think through or if you, and not even to answer now, but if you want to think through other ways just so kids can get that um, interaction with a trusted trusted adult um I, mean, I will i will answer for a second we did have a conversation earlier tonight with some of our support um personnel so our some of our paraprofessionals um you know our specialists so our you know, our sorry music pe and art teachers um all of them have the op the expectation of providing some um, real-time check-in opportunities so even if a classroom teacher isn't having a live morning meeting, it doesn't mean that one of the professionals in that classroom might not set up a, an opportunity for the students to get together too. Great, thank you. Um, Mary Beth, did you have any other questions? That was all I have or see in the general box. 
Yep, that's all Mary Beth has. Sorry, we don't okay. let her speak in the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, if there are any, please you, uh, feel free to put them through. We'll be on for a few more minutes. We have to um, approve two memorandum of agreements and the revised school calendar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, ask for three motions, and then we will do the voting by roll call um, as we need to for remote purposes. So the first is going to be to approve the memorandum of um, agreement between the Pembroke Teachers Association and the Pembroke Public Schools related to COVID-19. So moved. Second. <laughs> so David, I heard, and I believe it was Suzanne. Yep. Uh, perfect. So motion by David, second by Suzanne. Suzanne? Yes. David? Yes. Jim? Yes. Susie? Yes. And I'm a yes, it's unanimous, so thank you. Um, so is there a motion to approve the memor memorandum of, under of agreement, I'm sorry, between the Pembroke Teachers and Pembroke Public Schools in authoring me to sign related to April vacation? So moved. Second. second. Motion by Susie, second by Suzanne. Um, so, Suzanne? Yes. G uh, David? Yes. Susie? Yes. Jim? Yes. I'm um, sorry, I got that order. And I am, yes, so that is unanimous. Perfect. So is there a motion to accept the revised school calendar for the school year 1920? So moved. Second. Motion by Susie, second by Suzanne. Uh, Su Suzanne. Yes. David. Yes. Jim. Yes. Susie. Yes. And I'm yes. Okay. Perfect. We'll push out the updated school calendar um, tomorrow on our, post it on our website and I'll include it with the communication to families on Friday as well. Great, thank you. Um, I don't- can I, Mike, can I just say something real quick? Absolutely. I just wanna say thank you to the um, administration and the Teachers Association for working hard on that memorandum. Had to be pulled together quickly. Uh, it had to address a lot of things um, and um, thank you. Second in that, thank you. Yep, absolutely. So we do have another question that came in uh, from Callie and is it, I hope it's right, I got Macola. Oh. I hope that's, I hope I got it right. Um, will the sixth grade class still be going to Camp Borndale? When will the decision be made? Um, so again, it's really needing to know whether or not May 4th is a return to school date or not. So I would anticipate, um, as I said before, having a, a fairly, good idea about that following the commissioner's um, call next Friday. So we would be uh, bringing up all of these trips and activities at the April 21st school committee meeting. Is it possible to get an inventory or I should maybe I can probably calendar better of all the things that um, right now are dependent on May 4th and hopefully by the 24th we have a better idea from the Commonwealth on what May 4th looks like. Um, if we, is it possible to get at least a calendar so we know kind of the, the what's out there? I mean, we know the, the sixth grade trip to Camp Borndale, we know sixth grade promotion night, we know the senior activities, um, the day of the eighth graders, um, touring the high school, those types of things. Do we just, can we, it was possible to get an idea just so we know everything um, that could be impacted and we can at least know for planning purposes? Sure, absolutely. Great, if we could have that in 21st, that would be fantastic. Are there any other, oh, actually, sorry, another one from, from Jessica Kahn. Why would, why would we not work Friday of April vacation? Monday's a holiday, but what is Friday? Um, so we talked a little bit, well, a lot about um, the structure for that week. I think Monday is obviously Patriots Day. Friday, I think the intent of asking folks to work on what had traditionally been scheduled as a vacation week was um, to give them a break on both ends. Um, also, there's a strategic piece to that. So um, if we were to work on the Friday of April vacation, the last day of school would be Monday, June 15th. Um, that's not very conducive to learning, even if we're still in a remote um, learning platform. So I think that was part of the reason why we decided to have folks just do 
do the three days, but at the same time, I can tell you from a parent perspective, after the third day of remote learning at my house, I could use a break. <laughs> so, um, I think we were trying to be cognizant of staff needing a little bit of time as well as families. Mike has muted himself again, so I will. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so used to it. Go, go ahead with the question. So, you so uh, there's another question that just says, "Why would we shorten the year from the elimination of April vacation if we already missed some weeks?" I'm curious. Um, so, when we are talking about going to the 185th day, um, the time between the closure of March 16th to April 6th was not counted as time on learning. Um, but the April 6th moving forward is time on learning. So any time that we're going to work um, days that were originally scheduled as days off, quote unquote, they would count towards time on learning, which is why you would move back from the 185th day to however many of those additional days you've worked. So for us, it's 182 is the, the calendar day that would be um, getting out of school. Great, thank you. Yeah, I'm quick, too quick with the button on, on my mute. Um, are there any other questions before we adjourn for the evening? Anything else from the committee at all? Any questions um, as far as what our path forward looks like? We'll be meeting on the 21st. Information will come out from the superintendent's office um, over the next week or so. Hey, did, did I hear you say earlier, um, you were meeting next week. Did you just mean just budget sub or did you meet a full committee meeting? Yeah, no, we're going to try to get together as budget subcommittee so we can then prepare for the, for the larger meeting on the 21st. Okay, great. I just want to make sure I have that right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Mike, I just wanted to mention that um, yesterday I had the opportunity, as I said, to be part of the forum on PAC TV. I was lucky to be joined by Cheryl Larson, one of our social workers. Um, and Cheryl had some great advice for families and for, uh, for students and for adults about, you know, how to prioritize your mental health. I know that PAC TV is running that recorded session. Um, it is, de she definitely had some really great ideas about being flexible and, you know, how to get, just how, how to keep your mental health um, in the right place during this time. So I would just want to put a plug in for anybody that wanted to go to the PAC TV website and um, rewatch that recording. Cheryl was joined tonight. Great, thank you. We actually just had a... We had a comment come through from Leslie McDonough. Um, first of all, thank you for the comment. Um, I'm enjoying having these meetings accessible online. It makes it easier to attend with the kids at home. Thanks for sharing. And we're talk, we've, we've, we've discussed potentially when we do get back to meeting regularly because we've had a lot more people attend. Um, and I think it's great that we have so much inform, you know, be able to share information to such a wide audience. Um, we are gonna look at potentially trying to do this going forward. Not uh, not as much for the for the committee, but for folks to be able to listen to us um, or participate on online. Correct. Right. Um, Mary Beth and I were actually just talking about this beforehand. I think it is great to see, um, you know, seventy to ninety people participating in our meetings. We don't generally get that many people here at the library at North. Um, so definitely wanted to figure out a way to keep this piece going. Um, it may get a little choppy when we get into presentation kind of stuff, but definitely wanting to work through that because I think it is important for people to be able to get information, understanding that not everybody can get out for a couple of hours on a Tuesday night. So. Absolutely. Now, we appreciate everybody joining. Um, there is one more question. Um, sure. Question about MCAS. Sure, so MCAS has been waived at the federal level. Um, as we talked about before, there's two steps to the process. So waiving it at the federal level is one. There's also a piece of state legislation that needs to happen to waive it in Massachusetts. Um, so Governor Baker, um, during his address either last Tuesday or Wednesday, it's all a blur, um, as well as Commissioner Riley um, have both stated that, that piece of legislation has been filed. Um, so I would anticipate in a matter of days before we get the official waiver of the MCAS in the state of Massachusetts. Yeah, and they did cover just um, as a follow-up there, they did cover the graduation requirement, um, which would be for the class of 22? 2022, yes. Yeah, so there, could you just real quick, real quickly, a couple seconds on that one? Just in case anybody has a, a student who's a sophomore in the classroom. Right. So what they're doing 22. is they're able to alternate assessment for those students, um, not something as robust as the um, MCAS, the ELA MCAS that they take in 10th grade, but some kind of assessment so that they can meet the, the graduation requirement as set forth by the state. We have not seen a copy of what that assessment um, would look like, but in conversation with Commissioner Riley, um, again, the 
stance has always been not to penalize students for the situation that we're in now. So I can't imagine that it would be um, anything too outrageous. Great, thank you. Okay, so not seeing any other questions and not hearing any other from the committee. At 7.54, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. By Sus motion by Suzanne, second by? Second. David. Suzanne. Yes. David. Yes. Jim. <clears throat> I think he mouthed yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Susie. Yes. Thanks, everybody, for joining tonight, and we will be meeting again in a couple weeks. Stay safe, and thanks again for your uh, participating. Thanks, everyone. All right. Good night, thank everybody. You. Good night. Yes, thank you. Thank you.